This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. When we're working with vectors, many times we need a large data set to adequately test the program that we're writing. For example, if we're checking a searching or sorting function, we want to have a lot of data items because it's not very effective to just test a sort on three or four items. You need several hundred to really be effective, but at least 10 or 20. And entering those kinds of data sets into your program, either interactively or through direct assignment, is just too time consuming. So one way to generate a large data set without having to actually type the numbers in yourself is by generating random numbers in a loop and assigning those random numbers to the vector. So in this video, I want to discuss how to generate random numbers. The first thing you have to do is pound and include a couple of new libraries into your program. The first one is Standard Library, or CSTDLIB. And the other library is Time Library, CTIME, like so. Standard Library has the random functions that we need. And the Time Library has a time function that we're going to use to do something called seeding the random number generator. In fact, I want to talk about that right now. When you generate a list of random numbers, if you're not careful by generating what's called a seed, you will end up generating the same sequence of random numbers over and over again. Because random number generators are not truly random, they're just pseudo-random. So the first thing you always have to do when generating a set of random numbers is to seed the random number generator. One way to do that is by calling the time function with null that returns the time in milliseconds, and that number is provided as the seed. So the line in front of you is the random number generator seed, or srand is the name of the function itself. Once the random number function is seeded, then you can go ahead and generate random numbers. We'll do one random number first. Generate a random number by writing this formula. Let me write it out for you first, and then we'll discuss it. This formula would generate a random number in the range from 1 to 10. If I wanted to do from 1 to 100, I would have changed this first number to the maximum value. The 1,000 would look like so. In this case, we'll just do through 10, so we'll move it back to 10. Let's test the program by writing out the number. See what we get. So let's build and run. And we get 6. Let's run it again. We get 5. In fact, what we could do is let's just put this into a loop. We'll do a little bit of something different right here. Let's cut that out of the program, put the declaration of number above the loop. And inside the loop body, we'll just do an assignment statement like so. And then after we've generated the random number, let's just add it into our loop body like so. Close the loop body off. And let's build and run the program. And so there you see a sequence of random numbers. Let's close it and do it again. There's another set. And that's how the random number generator works. So now we can see how to put a set of random numbers into a vector. It's very similar to what we've done here. In fact, we can use this program to some extent. First thing we have to do, though, is we have to include the vector class into our program so that we can declare the vector. We'll add that line, the vector declaration line, at the top. We'll call it numbers, and we'll leave the initial size empty or zero. Then in our loop, we can go ahead and generate the random number and then add it or push it back into the vector. So let's change the loop to run from 1 to 100 instead of 1 to 10. Let's change the random number formula to generate a random number in the range of 1 to 100. Then instead of writing out each value, let's push it back onto the vector like so. And that's all we need to do. Now, we want to verify that we do have a sequence of random numbers, 
So we need to display those numbers. So as a means of kind of review, let's rewrite the display vector function. so that we can use it to display our random numbers. So we're going to say for int i equals 0, i less than vec dot size plus plus i, c out vec sub i, put a space and close it off. That's all we have to do. We're going to have a messy display with a little more work, we could have put the numbers in the columns, but I don't want to muddy up the lesson here with making things look nice. So let's move on down to the main program. Put a new line, call display vector with numbers as the argument, and then put another new line at the end. Let's run the program. And there's our list. Let's close it and run it again. There's another list. Let's do it one more time. Look at the first and the last number. 93 and 63. Let's run it again. 23 and 93. Hmm, that looks suspicious. Let's run it one more time. There we go. Put it down here where you can see a little bit better. 46 and 69 are the first and the last numbers. So to review, to generate a set of random numbers, we need to pound include CSTD, LIB, and C time into our programs. Then, the first thing we have to do is seed the random number generator with an srand call using the time function as its argument. Then, to generate the random number, we provide the formula that's rand mod the maximum value plus the minimum value. Writing that formula would generate a random number in the range of minimum to maximum, or in the case that you're looking at here, 1 to 100. Let's go out with a really long list. Let's do 10,000 numbers. All right, so we can build and run the program. And there we go. It's going to take a minute, but there's the list. See how easy and quick that was. Now when you write a sort function on that data set, you can be fairly sure that it's working correctly to sort 10,000 numbers into order. And in fact, in the next video, we'll look at a function similar to sorting, searching where we look through a long data set to try to find a particular value.